Okay, let's start again. So uh, I want you to, um, you know, see the overview of, um, you know, background information of RedCap application. Uh, RedCap is a secure web application for building and managing online surveys and database. Vanderbilt developed it in 2004, and there's a consortium uh, members with a lot of institutions, uh, um, and they've been working together to find, uh, fix some bugs and develop some new features. Uh, RedCap has been used to collect any types of data in HIPAA compliant environments. UICCCTS installed the REDCap and has been providing the end user services such as account setups and email or in person consultation since 2010. The server is in IHRP securely locked room and maintained by IHRP IT staff. And the system manager has been upgrading the REDCap versions about three to four times a year. For more detailed info about our RedCap application installed by CCTS, you can see our Terms of Use on our RedCap login page. Terms of Use document includes important recommendations for users for quality and secure database, description of CCTS supports and security-related features in system level that may be useful for your study protocol or IRB submission. Uh, just in case you missed the uh, introduction uh, in the previous slide, uh, the, the PowerPoint slide presentation will go about half hour, and uh, 40 minutes to 50 minutes, I will demonstrate the process to create the uh, project uh, and um, make some setups. Uh, and at the end of the presentation and demonstration, um, if time allows, I'm going to take some questions from you. But anytime, you can type in your question in the chat window. Um, so, uh, CCTS RedCap team currently has two administrators, including myself and the Biostatistics Core Coordinator, and one IT system manager. The major of our a major role of our team is system maintenance, user account management, and email communication to answer end user questions. Um, we also help enable some optional REDCap functions or modules, such as the double data entry, Twilio SMS, API, and uh, the other that admin only can set up. We are also providing monthly open REDCap consultation named REDCap Open Q&A, uh, which is a web conference, same um, as this using WebEx, and some instructional webinars. Although, um, you know, we, the admin team staffs, all have other duties to work on other than REDCap support, the email request uh, for account setup, admin-only project modifications, and approval, and some troubleshootings are provided uh, within one to two business days. These supports are uh, mostly free of charge. When there's an issue not easy to communicate it through an email, user can send us requests for an in-person consultation meeting. Okay, let me introduce the key features of REDCap. Uh, REDCap is easy to use with a user-friendly interface. Anyone who doesn't have any programming knowledge can use this web browser-based application without installing any additional software. REDCap can be used in any computer and mobile device with internet access. Regarding the security, uh, data collection will be done under a secure HIPAA compliant environment that requires individual lo uh, users login using ID and password. And audit trails and user uh, access right controls are provided. Only the people who have the access right to the database can view or edit um, the data. Every user may have different level of access rights that is set by the RedCap project owner following the study protocol. All activities made by um, each user will be recorded in audit trail module called login with timestamps. Identifiers can be removed or hashed before exporting data through the identification options. The communication uh, between server and user is encrypted. So this is um, the rack of security features, but more detailed information uh, is in our terms of use document. Um, RedCap is beneficial for multi-site studies. Uh, people from different locations 
uh, worldwide, as, um, as long as there's the internet access, uh, can um, access and enter data into one same RedCat form. As there's only one same form shared online, any updates made on the database will apply to all different sites in real time. Real-time status of data collection process, the prog progress um, can be tracked and viewed by allowed it users. Users of different sites or groups may be assigned in data, data access group, DAG, so that only their own group's data can be viewed or edited by um, within the site. Uh, lastly, in this slide, uh, using longitudinal or repeatable instrument option, you can collect data using the same form for the same subject multiple times for better um, convenience. I'll show you the details of these um, major features in the demonstration part. Um, of another key record features, web survey can be used to collect data directly from you know, survey participants using email invitation or public link for anonymous survey. For different types of fields, such as open-ended or multiple choice, branching logic, calculated field, uploading any types of files under 10 megabytes are supported. For open numeric or text data, validation options are provided. Uh, data export can be done by selected users from RedCap to different types of software such as SAS, R, Stata, or Excel using the role CSV formatted data with some de-identification options. To bring our ready collected data outside of RedCap, importing tool um, can be used. If the existing data can be converted into CSV file and follow the RedCap database design definitions, import is possible and beneficial to merge data and continue the data collection with it. Next, the report tool. Um, it gives the opportunities to get some subset of data with filter conditions. It doesn't do any statistical analysis, but it presents um, the selected part of the entire data set. Uh, by user's request, admin can enable uh, double data entry, then two different user's data entry results for the same subject ID will be compared and merged by a reviewer within the project team. API, API application programming interface um, is used to import and export without logging into RedCap um, using um, programming code. So this is for um, kind of programming uh, programmer level users, but um, you know, uh, big size of data very frequently in and out um, it will be um, easy to use. Um, this API uh, and then unique uh, users token is given when API is required. RedCap mobile app uh, can be downloaded and used in any iOS or Galaxy devices for offline data collection. So how can you uh, use um, or you know set up your account and or for your study team members? Um, who can get the access and how. I'm going to talk a little bit here. So uh, we set up RedCap account to any UIC health related researchers and affiliated non-UIC people. Uh, we have two types of user account, full access and access only account. Full access account is for uh, those who need to create new projects. Um, An access only account is for the people only need to access existing projects without creating or copying their own um, projects. For affiliated non UIC people, um, access only user account is provided. For the full access account, we need the request form to CCTS uh, service request page. Um, and for access only account users, um, we need to get email to our RedCap email, RedCap IHRP at uic.edu, uh, with user's full name, institutional email, and their PI or delegate to be their account sponsor. The sponsor of the access only account users can manage their account expiration dates in sponsor dashboard. 
we do not generate group account uh, sharing login ID or uh, password is not recommended for security purposes. To obtain some um, information about REDCap, you can look at the training videos in REDCap or health and FAQ, for example, um, by topics and REDCap section in CCTS webpage. Um, link here, but if you Google um, CCTS and you can search REDCap page, then there's some frequently asked uh, topic um, uh, document tutorials there. Developer site, the vendor built record site has some basic information too, but also you can, you know, um, do some web search when you have question and there are very, you know, kind of lots of information shared by other institutions out there. And if you have any other question that doesn't really uh, be covered by your search, um, you can all, all, always contact us at redcap, IHRP at uic.edu. Okay, let's take a quick look at the RedCap main interface screen. When you log into RedCap, you will see this home screen in my project. Um, home screen has some basic, um, you know, intro, and then uh, mostly you will start from my project tab. My project um, will show you the list of projects you made or other people created and gave you the access to. Another tab here, new project and health FAQ training videos, and you can see the send date option. So um, after selecting a project from my project list, the project home screen will show uh, the dashboard information of users included and number of entered records as shown in the left image here. And always uh, within a project, you can see this left menu, uh, data collection and applications. And when you click the project setup tab, um, there are some setups you will mostly do in development mode. Um, most information about uh, designing your database um, can be found under project setup. So main project setting and design uh, forms and field using online designer and data dictionary and some optional uh, modules and customizations such as repeatable instrument, auto numbering for records ID, um, scheduling, randomization and designated information, um, email information to the survey. Um, so these are the things you can look at. So uh, in order to create a new project, you have to click New Project tab. If you don't see this tab, that means you're access only user. So full access account user only can see this new project tab where uh, the project title and purpose of project uh, is selected. When the, per you know, the purpose of project is research, then some other additional information will be asked, such as uh, research type and uh, PI info, IRB number, uh, and so on. And you can start either from blank project, uh, create an empty project, or use some given um, templates, demographic template, or some classic database with six um, data entry forms, or longitudinal. Um, if you're a really beginning user and you know have no idea how to start, uh, starting from this basic uh, template form will uh, help to understand what type of fields are there. From there, you can make some changes, delete, and um, and use it in your real study. Um, online designer is the way uh, to create your forms and fields um, online. Um, so to create a form, there's an um, option here, create, or you can uh, try to search the form from RedCap shared library. It's under online designer. Um, if you are creating a, a standardized scale form such as promise measure or any other widely used clinical measurement forms, um, you may be able to find it from the shared library. And if there's anything close to what you're looking for, um, you can download and import it to your project. Um, from there, you can also make some modification um, um, on that imported um, database from the library. 
if you have a zip file for uh, forms from your other project to use, uh, you can also upload it. Then it will show in your instrument list in Online Designer. So there's the option upload the zip file. If data, data collection will be done using the survey, um, you, as you can see here, if I want to make this month's one data as a survey, then I should click Enable. So it looks like this form is enabled as survey. When a form is enabled as a survey, then a survey setting and automated survey option, invitation option will be um, given. And also survey queue and survey notification option will show here. So online designer, um, when you click uh, or select one form, you will see this type of screen. So each box is a field or a question. Um, in this example, we see study ID field and uh, section heading in yellow um, highlight and then date field, and this is for upload files. Any type of file can be uploaded up to 10 megabytes. And another section heading here, content, uh, contact information, uh, an open-ended text for first name, last name, and so on, this example. And when you see one field, there are five options here. Uh, if you look um, you know, close here, edit, copy, and branching logic, move, and delete. If we click edit, then you will see this screen. So edit field will give you an option to select a field type. There are these field types, the text box, note box for paragraph text, calculated field, multiple choice, drop down or radio button format for single answer. Um, if that is the question, you know, check all that apply, then checkbox field is used. Yes, no, true or false, and other, you know, formats are given, except for the dynamic query, which is only for um, super user, the admin user. When you click uh, select this field as a text box, then validation option is given. So for open, numeric, or text, uh, data entry, you can actually set up the validation. If that is date, then what type of format you prefer. Day, uh, DMY, day, month, year, or month, day, year, or you want to add our minute or um, some different formats. And if it's email, uh, email format is required, integer, letters, MRN, number, and so on. So you can actually um, it's going to be a better idea to set up an edition option if that is, um, you know, text box uh, to get better quality of data. And there's a question about this required field. Yes, no. If this field set as required field, then in the data entry form, if the entry is missing or skipped, then warning sign will pop up. Will pop up. An identifier, yes or no. If this field is set up as identifier, this can be excluded from the data export. All right. Um, data entry form here under left menu print data collection. In order to enter data, you have to go at edit record. Um, any test data in development or real data in production mode can be entered in uh, data entry form, which is named as ed edit record, as you can see here. Again, and branching logic and calculated field only works in the data entry form. So while you're developing your uh, form and field, if you want to check how your branching logic works and calculated field works, then you have to go to um, data entry form. After enter a record ID manually or um, going into a new record with auto numbering setup, user can enter data for each forms for each um, for each forms. And for each forms, when data is entered, um, it must be saved before leaving or continue to the next form. It is very important and very um, you know, highly recommended for users to move the project into production mode from the development mode when it's ready to collect the real data. 
This is to protect our database by locking from any unexpected data loss due to some impacting modifications. Changes can be still made in production, but the system will review to make sure whether the changes will not make any data loss. In production, when changes are needed, user can go into the draft mode and modify as needed, same as in development mode. And the changes must be submitted to request the approval. When any critical changes found, uh, recommend the administrator um, inform that to the user. Otherwise, within one to two business day, the change request will be processed and be ineffective in your RedKit project. Before moving into production, uh, make sure some hard setups such as um, changing ID or randomization setup, event setup, they must be they uh, they must be finalized before moving to production. These changes won't be, these hard, you know, setups are not going to be done by regular users, but only the admin can do that. Also, database must be tested thoroughly by entering multiple test data in development before moving into production. Data entered during development mode can be either deleted or saved by user's choice. Um, to add other RedCap users to your project or to manage other users' rights, go into the user right module, as you can see in the left here. Only the project owner or the same level of study personnel should have access to this module. When you need to, um, when you need other RedCap users access to your project, first check uh, if they have their own RedCap account set up already. If yes, then you can add their user ID in user right here, um, either by using with custom rights or assigned to role. And in user right option, as you can see, maybe you can um, see later clearly in the demonstration part, but um, some access um, level, no access, read only, view and edit for each form can be um, selected and some other uh, different options or modules can be, um, you know, chosen by different users in different level. Data access group is used for the multi-site study, um, as I mentioned earlier, to only, um, you know, limit the access to their own um, group's data. Data is exported into CSV format as a row, for, uh, row file, row data, so, um, and then that can be used uh, and opened in Excel. But also you can select other statistical packages such as SAS, R, um, Stata. The syntax to generate the software comparable data is also automatically um, produced. The statistical software packages must be installed by the user in their computer devices to run the um, auto-generated syntax. When you export data, you can choose either all data for all forms or for, for only selected forms or fields with optional filter conditions. Data export module also have options for reports. Um, selected subset of data by some filtering logics in report tool will show the real-time collected data status. As the RedCap report is to display only the subset or selected part of the exported record, um, but it doesn't have, uh, you know, have option to make more advanced uh, and statistical analysis uh, or customized table not always, you know, as needed. So when um, the report doesn't really uh, do what you want, then uh, mostly it is recommended to do it um, from, you know, outside um, analysis package after exporting the data. And now uh, export tool has some de-identification option as shown here. If user has any data already collected outside of RedCap, such as Excel or in other format, uh, it can be imported into RedCap project. If the importing data is formatted as CSV, I mean, you can convert it um, into that format. And also when it matches with the field formats that are already defined in your RedCap uh, Red project. 
For instance, if patients' demographic information is import, imported from outside source, such as their name, contact uh, number, age, and so on, each variable or field for them should be already set up in the RECA form uh, before importing with the same data format. Okay, now I will start demonstrating the basic process of creating project and setting up some options. So let's say we are doing a randomized control trial, uh, clinical trial for children with asthma to enroll participants, uh, screening or eligibility form will be collected um, asking child and their parents information. And for um, those who are eligible to participate in the uh, study, the follow-up data collection will be done to check parents' emotional status and the child's asthma conditions to test maybe the intervention effect. So you can see uh, these two very simplified forms, uh, eligibility or screening form and follow-up form. Let's take a close look at um, of the eligibility questionnaire form. That will be our first form in the RedCat project. So starting with ID, and we want to put ID as a manual entry, not uh, auto numbering from one, two, three. We just want to put, let's say, um, something we already have in our system, a number only in this example, but it can be letters and anything. I mean, letters and numbers, the combination of those two. And um, it is the next is child's first name and last name. Uh, it will be the open text field and parents' email. We want to make the validation option that must be email format and screening date. Um, and then just it is, uh, this example is asking to do month, day, year, MMDDIY. Um, child's date of birth, same format. And we want to get the auto-calculated uh, field from RedCap uh, to get the child's age using screening date and child date of birth. So it will be just, you know, this date minus the date of birth. So I'm going to show you um, how that will be calculated. English fluency, yes or no question, and ethnicity question one, two, three. Uh, if the others is selected, then uh, the specify, please specify that type of question will be followed. So we need branching logic because this please specify ethnicity will only uh, show when the others is selected and skipped when Hispanic and non-Hispanic is selected. Child's height is going to be number and it's asking um, the union must be in centimeter. Um, and weight is going to be in kilogram. I know this is not really realistic U.S. Uh, metric, but um, to have some simple, um, you know, example to get the BMI calculation, I just chosen it. Um, so we will use also the validation option. The centimeter kilogram is going to be number, and um, weight will be integer. BMI also is going to be like age, it's going to be auto an auto-calculated field. So uh, the field name in REDCAP is a calculated field. So you want to get that using the equation weight divided by height uh, times height. Height is going to be here in meters, not centimeter, but that's so much <laughs> details. And then the yes, no question. So these two questions, number 14 and 15, is going to be our eligibility uh, criteria. So the, are, you, um, are you a legal guardian of the child? Yes, no. If it's no, then this person uh, is not eligible to participate in the study. The child has been treated for asthma within the last six months. Yes, no. It must be yes if no is answered. Uh, is selected, then uh, not going to go to the study. So the 14 and 15 uh, both should be yes. Either one, if any of these is no, then um, it's going to be ineligible. So number 16 and 17 is going to be descriptive text showing the result of the eligibility um, criteria results. So sorry, you're not eligible. Um, so this will show if these two are any of these two. So 
if 14 is no or 15 is no, that's going to be our logic to show this branch logic. Number 17 is showing uh, things you're eligible to participate uh, when both of these are yes. And I want to just give you one more task to um, show, you know, these texts must be kind of different color and large font. Um, just wanted to show you the um, normal HTML code for editing fonts will work in the field label in RedCamp. So um, this example and the task uh, I'm going to tell you later is going to be document. We're going to make a document step by step and share it with our users later. And second form follow-up form. Uh, one question is about ch uh, ch uh, parents' emotional status, uh, Likert scale asking about you know the feeling feeling unhelp you know helpless or frightened. So all of the time and the going down is none of the time. And then as you can see, the numbering is a kind of interesting, right? So uh, for the analysis, sometimes if you're measuring the severe severity of disease or severity of the depression in this case, um, it's going to be easy to give a um, higher score for all the time and then a little less for the less frequent. And none of the above will have zero. So how can we, uh, dis um, you know, give, assign this numeric value in REDCap? Um, I'm going to show you. And the second question of the follow form is going to be check all that applies. So this is the symptom child uh, experience during last week, cough, wheeze, bre uh, breathlessness, skin rash. So anything happens will be selected. So not only one answer. So here's the task we're going to do in RedCap. Um, number one, where you have to create, of course, the two forms. And we'll do a test. Um, we'll enter the test data in at the record. And number three is going to be, we're going to add someone in user right and um, try to set it up as longitudinal. The second form will be set up as longitudinal repeated form. But we need to set up our longitudinal schedule as the this time point baseline, three months, six months. So we're going to have three um, events in the REDCap database. Okay, and the next uh, is to add one more test data in add edit, um, see how the data entry form structure is different from cross-sectional in number two before we make this longitudinal setup. Um, and then we're going to try to export the data. And the following task is we're going to enable um, survey option on the follow-up form and try to send the survey and try to open it in a um, public link and so on. So we're going to just do it. Um, okay. So this is good practice for everybody who wants to see the overview and, and you know, uh, practice uh, major features. Um, so uh, later, if you want to get this practice sheet with um, a tutorial, uh, let us know. All right, so let's go to RedCap to do this task. So I'm logging into RedCap. Look at this login page. Um, as you can see um, here, there's a uh, terms of use as mentioned earlier shortly. Um, so if you click this link, you can see our terms of use. So if you're a new user and haven't done yet, um, please this one time read through all the important facts of our system and recommendation, user's responsibility, um, and some system descriptions. So based upon um, your agreement to our terms of use, uh, user can log in. So I just logged into REDCap. I see the project, uh, mostly the test project I made, or someone um, add me as a user. So you'll see some project um, if you ever created or someone else added you. Okay, um, again, here in Control Center is only for the admin user, but except for this, you will see all these tabs. 
and full access right user, you'll be able to see this new project. So as you remember, um, the form um, is going to be, you know, we're going to have two forms. So these will be created in RedCap projects. So project title, I will, maybe you can um, put something identifiable and unique. I'll put Okay, so there are different purpose of a project. If you click, mostly it will be research, then PI info, IRB number, and um, you know type of research um, info is needed. I'm going to click practice. And also you can start from an empty project or use this template. If I click use template, then I can choose one of these because the task says we have to start from empty. So I'm going to click this, create project. Uh, and it says the first field, the first form is going to be identifier. So I'd say um, agree. So I just created this project. And then uh, I'm automatically, by default, goes into project setup tab. And I can see uh, these different options, main project setting. Anytime you can change the project title or other info, you just chose here by clicking here. And the next is online designer and data dictionary. So to, to start creating forms and field, um, the online designer is the mostly best place to start from. So I just clicked online designer and by default I see this my first instrument um, given. And as you um, remember the first very important um, reminder from REDCap is that first field of the first form must be ID. So do not delete this field. Please remember some people say, oh, I do not need ID field starting from, I just want to start from something else, but you, uh, it's not possible in RedCap. So always make sure the first ID field is not going to be deleted, but only thing you can do is change the field label. Again, I just click this edit button and for my ID field, I can just change it as a participant ID or something else if you want and change the variable name is fine. But once the variable name is, um, you know, decided and created, um, when you collect the real data, you cannot change the variable name, especially the ID. Uh, changing ID uh, affects um, the data in a critical way, you know, unexpectedly. So once you decide the format and the variable name of ID, you must not change it, especially in production mode. Okay, so I'm going to set it up. Okay, and then because this is the number, you, um, as you can see, I can pick it as an integer. If that will be just number only without decimal, of course, it's going to be mostly ID uh, will be integer if that's number only or uh, MRN or something else. But for this, I'm going to put it as integer. Otherwise, if you don't select any format or validation option for your ID, then ID can be, um, will be uh, recognized as a character value. So you, um, yeah, I'll put it as an integer for now here. Identifier, yes, no. If ID is something, uh, you know, identifier other than random generated number, then you can select as a yes. Okay. Otherwise, in project pro, uh, project setup, this is just auto numbering is um, selected. But if you want to put it as a manual entry, not starting from one and going through two, three, four, five, you just want to put manual um, entry. That's what was asked in the task list. Then you should disable it. Okay, going back to the online designer. So I have one form now, uh, but of course I want to change the name into, okay, let me go back to the list. And if you click this button, I'm sorry, oh, I have to do 
this. So uh, choose action. I see the option to rename it. And this will be my eligibility questionnaire. OK. And then um, just to remind you, our the following fields are first name, child's first name, last name, and email, and so on. So I will start from child's first name. So it will be text box. Or you can write something, please enter, or more um, kind of, um, you know, reader friendly format anything there's no length limit or you know format limit in field label but variable name if you click this enable auto naming of variable then the field label is going to be copied here mostly it's not a good idea because field label will be very long and variable name has a length limit so if it is truncated then it uh, sometimes becomes non-identifiable and no meaningful names. So I personally prefer to just do it um, as a manual way. So I will just put first name. So variable name should be all lowercase and only letters. And start from letters or underscore. Because this is text box, I have a validation option. Um, because it's name, I just put it as a letter only. And the name, is it required? If this is something um, can't be missing, very important information, then you can just you know, put it as a re required. Identifier, yes, no, um, setup, you can select. So I made this first name field. And the next will be child's last name. And again, this is too long to meet, and I change this into last name. And again, this will be letter only, and I will just save this way, OK? And next is the parent's email. And then maybe I just make some change from there. Validation option must be email, OK? And then save. Probably this will be identifier in the real case, so you have to set it up as that way. So so far, I just created um, you know default ID field, which I cannot delete, and then three additional fields. Going back to my list, I have one form to add the second form of the follow-up form. I should click create here and add instrument. That will be my follow-up form. Okay, by doing it, I have two different forms. So I'm going to show you, uh, because we have limited time, I'm going to show you uh, the already made project for that example forms. Okay, so I just selected this example form. Going to online designer, same as our, you know, uh, form, eligibility questionnaire and follow up form um, was made here. So if I click eligible questionnaire, you can see last name, first name, last name, email, and screening date, and child date of birth. So let's look at this date field. How do you make it? Um, so for date field, again, select text box, uh, screening date field, label, variable name. And this is important. If that is date uh, field, you have to set up uh, the date format from validation option. Um, as you can remember, the task says um, the date has to be month, day, year, MMDDYY. This is that. OK, require yes, no identifier. It's based on your uh, option or choice. And click Save. OK, so same format for child date of birth. We made it um, here, right? Um, and let's look at the calculated field I mentioned. So we want to get child's age using these two dates. First one is pre, uh, pre screen date and date of birth. Basically, the date difference is between these two, these date minus date of birth, right? So to do that, uh, you have to select calculated field, OK? And then field label will be child's age and variable name. 
and look at this calculation equation. So um, to see the example, you, anytime, uh, I mean, this, by clicking this link, you can see a lot of examples. Even myself, when you forget, when I forget the syntax exactly uh, what it was, then I look at this information. In this example, um, you have to look at this function called dativ. So dativ uh, gets the date difference between date of birth, child date of birth, and screen date. So the rule is uh, date fun date diff, um, and followed by the parentheses, and then the square bracket, and inside of that square bracket is the variable name of the child's birthday. That was D-O-B. So uh, the rule is the first date should be older date, and the newer date is going to be the second screen date. And uh, the next is the, the unit of the calculated difference. We want to get years because of that we're going to get age. And date format is month, day one, uh, month, day year. And true means the return value should be true value. So the difference between these two, if date of birth mistakenly entered the layer date than screen date. Screen date is today, but date of birth is 2011 or something later date. I mean, 2020 or 21st. Then the, this true return value will give us the negative age. Negative age means that's a entry error. So for some uh, reason, um, you know, it's uh, your op it's option to get the you know, absolute difference or the true value, but the true value will give you some warning, like uh, some invalid data entry can be detected by that way. So we just take the uh, difference between to this date using date difference, and the round down was used because we don't want to get the decimal point of the age. So this is the calculated field. And we want to just have a, um, you know, I mean, going back into, you remember, we just have an English frequency, yes, no, and then ethnicity, this a radio button field. And this is the branching logic. For um, ethnicity, if someone clicked others, then we want to show specify ethnicity. So here you see the green arrow um, icon, branching logic, if you click it. Then there's a syntax, but uh, let me clear the logic to show you how to do that. So actually, it's good to use drag and drop option down here. And you remember the ethnicity is others. So here, drag and drop. So if ethnicity is others, then this um, specify, please specify the question will show. Otherwise, it will be skipped. So by doing this, branching logic will be added. And height and uh, you know height and weight is going to be number. And also, if you want to make it as an important note, you can add the field note. Kilo, it should be in centimeter. And then it, the message will show down here. So PMI is same as a calculated field using weight and height. So remember the variable name for height and weight is exactly like this, height and weight inside of the square bracket. So height variable divided by 100 because it was centimeter. Um, so that kind of equation, uh, you know, arithmetic equation is made to get the BMI. Okay, and then two eligibility question: Are you a parent of legal guardian of um, the child? And as you can see, this square bracket first name is piping. You want to bring the child's first name. So if the child's name was John, then your question uh, can be customized. Are you parent of your legal guardian of John? To bring that info, that entered um, text info, you can use piping by using this square bracket with the variable name. And yes, no question for these two. So you remember the sorry, you're not eligible. This descriptive text only uh, shows when either of these are is no. So the branching logic will be the guardian is no or treat, treated is no. 
And thanks, you're eligible, is going to be both yes, so guardian equals one and treated equals one. Again, like I wanted to show you the bigger syntax over here. Okay, so we're going to see how this works. Um, and one last thing I wanted to point out, uh, you see this is red and bigger font. That was done by using HTML um, code. It's a simple one, font size equals color is something and enclose that comment. So that works in red cap field label. So we want to see how the calculated field and branching logic. So let's go to add edit record. So, um, you know, there's no record yet, but click Add New Record and click Eligibility Questionnaire. So, first name, last name, parents' email. I'm going to use my email. And then today, screening. So today is convenient if it's today or if it was last week, then click this uh, calendar icon and go to this. Um, click this way is better um, than putting manually the numbers in case the format doesn't match. It'll pop up the warning because uh, you remember we just set it up as month, day, year format. If I put it the other way, like year, month, date, then this alert shows up. So I'm going to change it as today and with that format. Child's date of birth, um, if that is 2010 something. So by picking up these two dates, we could get this age, right? And um, as I mentioned, if the date of birth mistakenly have the future date value 2020, then you see the negative value. And I made this warning message as a descriptive text and using branching logic. When age is negative, um, the entry person can see your data entry as an error. So um, in that way, we can make sure in uh, the data entry time uh, immediately when there's something wrong. English fluency, yes, no. And then if I click Hispanic or non-Hispanic, nothing shows up further. But if I click others, then please specify your ethnicity. OK? And then centimeter and kilogram of the height and weight. Um, I'll put just something. If it's 100 and then 30, then BMI will be calculated. Okay. All right. So now we are in the eligibility questionnaire. Um, two questions. Uh, your legal guardian of John, as you can see, the entered name value shows here using piping. So click yes, nothing happens. No. Already we get, sorry, you're not eligible. Yes, even though it's yes for the second question, but already it's not eligible. And if I click both yes, then you see this eligible, you know, passing message. And when it, the data entry is done, you can actually choose. This is just subjective choice from the user. Um, if it's complete or even though it's complete, uh, it's not verified or incomplete, within the team you can decide uh, which one to choose. So this is not, um, you know, system automatic, um, you know, decision. I will say this is complete and save exit form or people can choose save and stay or save to go to next form and so on. So I'm going to save and exit the form. So for record ID 1, I see the first form status is complete because it's green, and second form hasn't started yet. Okay? And by clicking it, um, you know, I just see these two questions. Let's go back to online designer to talk about a little bit of this format. So this is only one choice. And do remember, I, I wanted to do all of the time we'll have a higher or larger numeric value. 
So here, currently it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I want to change it into this all of the time as a seven. Then number followed by comma, you can change the numeric value. But if you don't assign numbers here, um, the choice option, for each choice option, um, one numeric value will be assigned um, either automatically or manually if you put the number here. Automatic numbering will be, um, you know, the integer from one. So one, two, three, that's the real number. Sometimes people want to see, say don't know as a nine, nine or something more like different from automatic numbers. So you can do that by uh, putting number followed by comma. So I want to do this, five, four, and then so in a descending way, two, and then one, or zero, you know, so save. So I change that numeric value. And the second question is check all that apply the child had uh, as a symptom last week. So anything, um, you know, child experience will be selected. So that should be checkbox, multiple answers. So it shows the radio button is a circle and the checkbox will give you the square. So this will be our follow-up form. All right, so let's go back to our task list. So we just created two forms here, right? And the next task was uh, enter the record. So we just did it. And the next thing we want to do is the longitudinal setup. So let's say of these two form, eligibility questionnaire and follow-up form asking the patient's symptom and parent's emotional status, we want to ask this question three times at baseline in the screening time, and then three months later and six months. So we have three time points. If we want to do that, then this option, use longitudinal data collection with defined events, should be enabled. So I'm clicking it. And then, because this is the stage we make the forms, and the next is define my events. So I need to go here. And events, I will have three events, right? So one is already given, but I can change the name, my event name. The first one is going to be baseline. And the second one is going to be uh, three months follow-up. Okay, so now I have two events and one more. I want to have three, six months follow-up at my event. So as you can see, so now I have three events and, and the auto-generated unique event name. This will be um, exported from the expert data. So every line, expert data will have um, this info. So you will see where this data comes from, which event data is this. After you create this event, you need to go to this tab, designate instrument for my events. This is to link this event to the form. So these are my two forms. Um, and I want to link my form into my event. So click begin editing. And of course, my eligibility questionnaire will be collected at the baseline time, just one time. And if I want to do repeat three times of my follow-up form, then link, you know, check these boxes here and save. So I have this design of a uh, repeated measure. So after you set up this longitudinal, um, you can see how the data entry form looks different. So let's go back to add edit record up here down uh, on the left menu pane. And uh, we just entered the first record. It, now it shows us the table format, baseline, and then we can choose which event this data is. So if it is baseline, if it is three months and six months, you can click that button. So click baseline and select. And then I can continue for three months. Same form, 
for same ID, and you don't have to repeatedly enter the record ID. It's all linked um, from the first ID to the following forms and events. The only one choice is allowed it, and then so now you can see uh, I have two events data collected. Okay, but what if I want to have a schedule for that real, you know, three months and six months? I want to show it in red cap calendar, and I want to know when it's going to be three months after the baseline. Then you have to enable the scheduling module option here after auto numbering under the additional customization. I mean, uh, optional modules. Click enable. After you enable, you see a scheduling menu here and then um, because it should be um, temporal so we need to set up a little more about the event so let's go to define my events and we have to set up the day's offset so first day is going to be starting from one or zero doesn't matter but the second event is going to be three months after the first event so I have to put that actual days so it will be, because three months, let's say it's 90 days after the baseline visit or uh, eligibility. And then pre, uh, before and after that, you know, assigned date, allowable, you know, I can collect data before a week or after a week of that day, or just zero, zero doesn't matter. Okay. And then for my six months, because it's six months, I'll put in, but it has to be in days um, you need, 180 uh, and save. So now I have more you know, time sensitive information here. And what happens if I do this? Um, when you enter data, you can still start from at edit record, but if it matters, when the data collection is done, um, then data collection uh, should start from here in scheduling. Let's say I have new record ID 2, then um, select the screening date. If it's today, and then click Generate Schedule, then you can see this follow-up follow schedule. Because you remember the three months and six months we set up based on the starting date. So May 23rd, and it's, the next is going to be August 20th, and then November. And you can change the date uh, from here in your time if that doesn't work, like if it's Saturday or it's something that um, will not work. So we can make some changes here and then create schedule. And anytime that, you know, this schedule can be edited. So by creating this schedule, um, you can go to calendar and then ID2 shows up in our calendar. By clicking, you can go to move, you know, for it to enter data. And you remember it was August someday for that second event, and it will show up here. Okay. And it also shows up in ed edit record of new re new data ID number two. So either using scheduling, I mean from calendar or data entry form, um, you can enter data. So this is kind of basic setup for longitudinal. Uh, and if you don't have any event. Uh, in a number of limited events, you don't know, but the data will be repeated for the follow-up, you know, 10 times, 20 times, you know, but you don't know. It doesn't matter. Every time, I mean, there, if there's a data, it's kind of recurring event data. Every time the event is recurred, you want to enter the data. If that is case, it's hard to set up the event number or the date, right? In that case, instead of using this longitudinal setup, there's another um, option called repeatable instrument. By doing it, by enabling this, you can uh, enable repeat a form as many as you need it. 
Okay, so let's go back to our task list. So we've been done to number four. We did the longitudinal setup, and then we saw the data entry form, how it looks different. And then let's look at the exported data. So um, just enter some record in number one. So go to export, and then all data, there's export data key, and then I'm going to select row data. And then the identification options are here. If you want to you know, remove all identifier, then you can click that. Export. And then row data, the CSV format will show. And then it will give us the ID and then unique event name and the entered record here. And each event data will show in a different row. Okay, let's move on to next task. I remember it was about survey. So um, we want, if we want to set the second form as a survey, not only the regular data entry, then go to project setup, and I have to enable the survey first. So this is a project level setup and go to online designer. So among these two form, which one do you want to use survey? I want to use the follow-up as a survey. So click enable. Then you will see this survey setting. So survey title to show the participant and some instruction before beginning. And you can add your institution or group's logo. Um, and the following options are how do you want to uh, display the page just everything in one page by scrolling down i mean if the survey is long then you should select one section per page and how do you have sections by adding section headers um, in that field type then uh, by section heading uh, you know when the section heading is located it's going to be considered as a new section so one section on per page will display and then go to next like next page key will show at the bottom and there's another option uh, save and return so you can see uh, each every options uh, in selected that's easy to follow and here allow save and return uh, if it is kind of in a long survey sometimes they need to leave and return so then you can allow that by clicking yes, and do you want to give them access code or without access code, they can continue. That is another option. An acknowledgement message like thank you or like reminder can be set up at the following um, options and save changes. So now I have my follow up form set up as survey. And I want to see how the survey form will look like. So the task says I have to use the serve public link. But there is a problem. It says public survey. Public survey is needed when your survey is anonymous. So that means you don't have to know the information. You're not going to send email invitation. It's going to be sent out to anyone you, whom you don't know. You can control. So this type of survey um, has to do, have the format the first form of that project must be survey because because the first form in this example contains the you know individual participant information already so it cannot be anonymous so this follow-up form is based on the first information so it cannot be anonymous but um, if you set up the first form as a survey, then you can open the public link. Let's just pretend to do this first eligibility questionnaire can be done by survey. I mean, it doesn't make sense in this example, but um, if that is allowed it, then you can go back to survey distribution tool and I can finally have the survey link for the public link. So you can co copy this link and use your email and send it to everybody, like, you know, participate to the survey, but you will not know who answered, um, and it's not going to be tracked by the system. 
Okay, so, but let's go back to our example. This study clinical trial doesn't make sense to be, you know, done with the anonymous survey, so I'm going to remove this survey option for the first form. So delete survey setting. Now the first eligibility form is now not enabled. And then there's another thing I want to remind you about the survey. It is good the first, um, if you have email information already, you know, entered in your online designer form. Um, mostly it's the first form or pre located form before the survey, um, then you want to use that information to uh, make the invitation process facilitated. So here's an um, option called designate an email field for sending survey invitations. So I'm going to enable that and select the email field you want to use. So I have one email field, parents email, and save. By doing it, by going back to survey distribution tool, Participant list tab will show uh, me the entered email. And from here, I can start invitations. So if I have 10 or 20, 30 pre-screening or screening form with the parent's um, email, then I can send a um, survey invitation to those um, list of people. Because I only have one, it shows one, but if it's multiple, you can select everybody or only a few people here. So this is the message to invite the survey. When do you want to send it? Immediately on, or at a specific time, you can choose. Um, and then from whom you want to send it, subject. Um, and this is the default message. The survey link is automatically added to your message, so you don't have to link. I mean, um, find the link and attach it to here. And the survey link in this email invitation system is individualized so that um, when someone answered, then that you know response status will show in the system. So the link is not the same to everybody, like public link. So uh, it's better not to touch the survey link. It will be um, automatically shown here. But you can customize the message. OK. So um, let me try to send it to my, maybe, yes, uh, subject test to my UIC email and send invitation. OK. Then it says your email is being sent. And then status, responded, yes, no, it says it hasn't responded yet. I'm going to check my email. Uh, when it's arrived, I will let you know. It may take some time sometimes, so I will wait. But again, to invite people, you go to survey distribution tool and uh, see the list of people. And for the longitude now, you can pick which event of survey you want to send. If it's a third three months, or six months, you can choose that event and send. OK, so we did the survey setting um, here. And then uh, distribution tool. OK, I got an email. I'm going to um, share that with you. Oh, no. So I clicked my email URL survey link. And it shows up this way. So this is the survey screen. And it shows me the entered record I did for the previous um, one, because I, I sent a, you know, a baseline survey, which already entered in the edit, add, edit record. So, but if I haven't done, then I mean, I can change it. If it was three months, this must be blank. And I can reset this way and submit. Okay, if this is submitted this way, and let's go back to RedCap, it must show up in ed edit record as a collected data. So it was ID 1, and then this survey response will show this way. Because if survey responses sometimes should not be edited, um, the option is given. But still, it's possible if you click Edit Response. But it's under user rights. Um, some user may not be able to do that. So uh, survey 
option, you know, survey response can be edited or, you know, viewed here. And also, uh, not only in, through the survey, if it's hard to send the invitation, you can actually open here and then send it from this uh, data entry form. Okay. Let me talk about user rights a little bit, because uh, one of the tasks is to add someone into your project. So I just clicked user right, and I want to add other RedCat user to work with um, under this project. So I'm going to add our um, other step of RedCat, Natalie, and I pick her name. So either you just put the ID or their full name, and it will just pop up automatically um, their information if they have account with us. It's not linked automatically to UIN or UI system. If they don't have RedCap account set up already, uh, you cannot find them here. Okay, with custom rights, then I can choose this person's right. Again, if I give user right to Natalie, then she will work as a um, project owner, the same as myself. So you have to be careful not to give this high, highest level privileges. Export, import, some options. And I want to give her a dated record only in the database, but not a this survey response. Then she may not be able to edit survey response. By doing this, I have now two users. And multi-site study, I mentioned data access group. So click data access group. And then um, I just made uh, three groups already. And I want to assign this user into UIC, then um, Natalie person here, uh, she can only and, uh, view and edit UIC record. And whatever she enter will be um, marked as a UIC data. OK. Another thing I want to do um, is move this project into production. So when it's ready, so the, you know, this again, just wrapping up the um, main project setting and making forms and field in online designer, um, and then define my event for longitudinal and survey setup after enable the survey and going to online designer and so on. And I just did some um, event setup for the scheduling modules. And when it's done, uh, just you know, try to enter as many you want, test data, and by other staff, and you know, make some changes. And especially the setup made here, define my events designate form. This cannot be changed in production by normal user, but still, admin user can do that for you. But you know, communication back and forth sometimes takes time. So if you want to just make it. Uh, as much as you know, finalize possible. Then try to um, you know test thoroughly before moving to production. But once it's ready and you think it should be collect, you know, st starting to collect the real data, don't forget to go to project setup and all the way down. There's option move project to production. So I click this and then there's good checklist. So try to read and you know make sure you have in for got anything among this info. I agree. And then there's an option, as I mentioned. Um, you know, we have two test records. Either you can keep it or delete it. If it's a real record, you can keep it. And if it doesn't matter, I mean, it's actually test data not real, then delete it. And I'm going to keep it, but yes, move to production mode. Now, as you can see in the project status, it's now production, not development anymore. What if I want to make change in production? I mean, it happens so many times, right? You need to add some fields and find some mistakes, or like if you want to make any modification, you can do that by going to Online Designer. Click. The only difference is I cannot go into the form directly, but one more pass. Um, here, enter draft mode. So we are going to be like protected zone. The changes I make in draft mode is not going to affect to my real data already collected, but the changes will be in draft. And then when the changes are done, then I should submit 
changes for review, an automated uh, review result will be sent to the Red Cap admin team. So we are going to be able to see the result, and if the change has some critical issue, it will show up. So let me show you an example. I want to change my um, ethnicity numeric code one two three into one three four okay i saved i changed that it it just you know happened but it didn't really go into effect in effective um you know result in my database yet because it stays in draft mode and i want to add one more field test question, so I'm going to just call it as test yes, no. So I just added new field here. So I made two changes. I made the numerical changing, and I added new field. And then let's see how it will affect. As admin user, I can see the uh, um, change result. And you may be able to see this uh, link. If you can see, then try to click. Then this is the system review result. Because I changed this critical way, you know, before the gray is my current value. So non-Hispanic was two, but I changed it into three. That means my existing data already entered have one, two, three, one, two, three. But upcoming uh, data, three means not others anymore. It will be non-Hispanic and branching logic will work in a different way. It's non-Hispanic, then please specify what pops up, which is really um, trouble in a non, not correct way. So the wording is um, saying like this way. But when I add this test field, you see this green? Green cell means we're adding something, but that doesn't affect anything to existing data, of course. Although they will have a missing data, but I mean, because they already finished the data entry, and this is later entered, uh, added, but it doesn't really, you know, change something. So that's ignorable, but this, um, you know, critical change will be reviewed and sometimes be canceled by the user. Okay, if you think you're done, then click Submit Changes, then you um, hear from us back in one or two days. Mostly it's within a day. Okay, let's make sure I covered everything. So move to pro uh, move project to production, and we did this. Okay, pretty much, I think I covered. All right, so um, we have about eight minutes. So uh, thank you so far to um, uh, participate in this sense. So I'm going to um, cover a few questions from you.